So. I guess I guess some people might think that this style of cooking and camping in the woods don't go hand in hand, but of course all of our modern ovens had their origin in the campfire. And um, these cast iron pots are wonderful ovens. They make all sorts of cooking possible. And uh, being able to cook outdoors is incredibly important for morale. It's about being able to live outdoors, not, not just visit it in a temporary fashion. Dinner may be modern fare, but Gordon's not lost touch with the past. As part of our ongoing experiments, he's keen to test out an ancient Maori recipe from New Zealand for eating bracken roots. So whether this stand is, uh, it seems pretty good by, by British standards, whether it's up to the, what, what the Maori required of their stands of, of, of good roots, as they called them, is another matter. They were very fussy indeed, and only a tiny fraction of the stands were suitable for their purposes. This may be more like what we're after. It's not too old, like some of the big, big ones that have been so far. It's this white, this white gooey layer of starch-rich material, but unfortunately a very thick core of, of fibres too. So whether we'll, it'll, whether it'll try anything like the amount of starch we need to uh, give us a thick uh, sludge of goo, I don't know. Bracken roots are potentially toxic, so we're following the Maori recipe closely, even though it seems counterintuitive. It says to dry them, then rehydrate them, and these roots have had three days soaking. And although they've swollen up to their original size, which is good, they're still hard as rock. And uh, this is a bit, of a, a bit of a surprise. So how it's going to be when we beat them, and, uh, which is the next stage indicated by the Maori recipes, if you like, I have no idea. Well, immediately you can see white flesh there, but uh, some of it's a bit brown, which is, means it's a bit old. and. They say that you get this uh, mushy stuff coming out, glutinous, it is glutinous, I can, I can, I can feel it's slimy. We haven't got a mass of, of white stuff uh, being liberated. Let's try a little bit more anyhow. Pretty gooey. Right, let's tip this stuff out and see what it's like. And see if we can get it free from the fibres. No. No, this, is, this, this isn't getting it free from the, from the fibres at all. The, the fragments of fibres are, are carried over with the, with the goo anyhow. Um, it's not working. Greg, what do you reckon? That we've got this problem of not really knowing what made a, a the Maori's perfect stand. No, there's no description of what made a good stand, only that they knew good from bad. And that they're prepared to send their good grounds to the, to the death. So, well, it's worth a, worth a go anyhow. Definitely worth a go, and I think the gooiness suggests that there is good starch in there. Yes, it starts there somewhere. Yep. So there's more work to be done before we crack bracken. Gordon's dregs aren't anything like food, but I reckon my sorrel paste has far more potential. All of those sorrel leaves have boiled down and dissolved, actually, into this thick, green, very unattractive looking paste. You can see there, it doesn't look very uh, appealing, does it? But appearances can be deceptive. What I have to do with that now is I'm going to add to that some sour cream. Mix it in steadily, which I'm going to whisk in. And now I'm going to put a drop of sugar in there. It's quite sour. I'm going to need a little bit of that. Hmm, good. And 
now I scoop this a strange looking green concoction in to the tartlets. And there we have it. Well, that's for dessert. And I've got to finish the main course now. I'm going to put those somewhere safe. There we go. Gordon oh, one yeah. venison oh, casserole. Wow. That is something special. That smells and, um, absolutely delicious. To go with it, roast potatoes. Oh, fantastic. Bon appetit. Oh, thank you. Let's see how the meat is. Mm. Oh, that is just so good. Those flavours. Tender and magical. <laughs> All good stuff in here. <clears throat> so the whole day cooking has paid off, isn't it? Mm. That was all right, wasn't it? Brilliant, that was delicious. Well, I've got a real delight for you for dessert. Well, this looks pretty remarkable. You remember the uh, sorrel that you gathered? Yes, indeed, I'm very fond of sorrel. Well, I've turned it into a sorrel tartlet for dessert. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, I really enjoy sorrel, but I, I've never seen anything quite like this before. <laughs> I wouldn't see what it resembles. It's absolutely delicious. Oh, that's lovely. What does it remind you of? It's got a sharp flavour to it, which I really, really like. A bit rhubarb -y, isn't it? This is very, very reminiscent of rhubarb. It's absolutely delicious. Secret recipe, that. No, no need to me and the viewers. <laughs> this is going to catch on in a big way, I think. <laughs> kind of if a... If I'd known you were going to produce this way, we would have worn black tie. <laughs> Well, we haven't got our head torches on. I think that makes it a formal dinner. Mm. Well, I think I'll have to try some of this too. Mm -hmm. Your good health. You too. Mm. Mm. That's lovely. I can see Mr Kipling writing to you shortly too. <laughs> <laughs> Offered by the idea. After days in the woods, I am drawn to how darkness transforms this world. The calls of owl or barking fox, night jars and bats filling the night. Yet I like to imagine the noises our ancestors would have known that we can no longer hear wild in Britain. Like a wolf's howl, the footfall of a bear or a bison's guttural rumble. It's a wonderful way to time travel before dawn breaks on our last day in camp. It's chilly this morning. Autumn seems to sneak up on you at the end of summer. The first thing you notice are these heavy mists. That's a sure sign that autumn's on its way. First job in the morning, get the fire on, hot water for a shower. Begin to really appreciate it now. It's staggering that a single kill which has already given us many meals, can still provide for a feast. That's good, Gordon. I think that end up here. All right. Yep. So today, I have got some guests in my camp. I have uh, some soldiers coming from the Gurkhas. I keep bumping into Gurkhas when I'm overseas. Whenever I do, they've been kind enough to invite me at my parties for... Uh, dinner, so I thought uh, we should do a return match. What I'm going to do is we're going to cook this deer in more of an Aboriginal way, we're going to cook it underground. 